Good afternoon, Mayor Pickett, fellow councillors, staff, and those joining us in person and online. As chair of the Finance and Administration Committee, it's my pleasure to present Budget 2023 for the Town of Clarenceville. The yearly preparation of this budget is a time not only to look forward but to take stock of our accomplishments and remind us of just how much we, with the help of our partners, have been able to do. Through 2022, we continue to deal with what we hope are the remnants of COVID-19. We have taken a lot of learnings from the pandemic and we have nimbly pivoted, adapted, and adopted new business strategies that will serve the residents well into the future. We have also felt the impacts of rising interest rates, supply chain issues, and inflationary pressures. 2022 has marked a milestone as Clarenville officially became the second fastest growing municipality in the province. The latest census data from Statistics Canada released earlier this year shows Clarenville is now home to just over 6,700 people, 6,704 to be exact, with a population growth of 6.6% since the last census in 2016. We also have a relatively young, comparatively, uh, population relative to the province. And we're well educated and we have a strong and talented workforce. We've also been able to attract a growing number of new residents from commu uh, communities across the province, many of whom have moved here for the wide range of age-friendly services and age-appropriate housing. Just to kind of speak to the statistics a little bit, um, the growth, 6.6%. An increase in housing stock, 12.2% since, uh, since 2016. We look at our age uh, breakdown, uh, the core group of working people, people who pay taxes, people who have families, people who buy homes and groceries and things like that, is about 56% of our population. 22 to almost 23% are seniors and about an equal amount are people who are young people, which is an ideal balance for a town. From our education level, we have you know, a very high proportion of people with college and university degrees. And if you look at it from a, a labor force, we have a varied labor force involved in many aspects of industry, government, finance, you name it, Clarenville is represented there. Supporting continued growth will require our council to make strategic and often difficult decisions to ensure that we continue on the right path for our town and our residents. The decisions that I'm about to discuss were made in what this council feels to be the best interest of all of our stakeholders and in line with the town's stated vision. And our stated vision, by the way, the town of Clarenville is a healthy and inclusive community where people, businesses, ideas, and ideas thrive among a strong sense of community. Our continued growth is built on our people, our partnerships, our strategic location, and the strong local and regional economy that is supported by the delivery of well-planned and managed municipal services and modern infrastructure. That is the elements, those are the elements that help make, guide our decision making, and you will see them reflected in this budget. We appreciate the challenges that our residents have faced since the beginning of the pandemic. This year, in particular, financial challenges have hit everybody hard. This was top of mind as we entered into our bu budget preparations. Since early September, we've worked with departmental managers to review all departmental spending. We've also evaluated our priorities for the coming year. Asked questions of our staff, weighed our options, multiple meetings. Like the household budgets of our residents, the town has experienced significant increases in costs of materials, equipment, supplies, and labor. Like every other municipality, it is costing more to provide the programs and services that our residents need and deserve. Just as our residents faced hard choices to make their income stretch further, so does the town. To give our work some context, I will first reflect on the year past and then give an outline of our current situation finishing up with an overview of our plans that the council has put in place to better manage our town through 2023. In terms of town-sponsored projects, 
key town sponsored projects include the Shoal Harbor Causeway Bridge replacement. Engineering has now been completed and the construction tender has been awarded to Trident Construction for $3.45 million. The project will be equally cost share between the province, federal government, and the town of Clarenville. And construction is set to begin in the spring of 2023. The new town hall that we're in right here now. The town opened its newly renovated town hall on Pleasant Street in January of 2022. The $2.5 million facility features an enlarged office and meeting space, new council chambers, and a vastly improved building environment that will take us for another 50 years. Strategic road and sidewalk upgrades. 2022 was a very busy year for our town's public works department as work was completed on key town road infrastructure. Past year saw road improvements to Shoal Harbor Drive, Gilbert Street, Valley View Heights, and Marine Drive. A section of sidewalk along Memorial Drive East was also upgraded. Clarenville Municipal Plan. The town's new 2021-2031 municipal plan was completed and submitted to the Provincial Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment. This is a legal document that guides physical development and land use in the community and addresses what the town should look like in the future, how uh, the town land is used, the town's cultural and social qualities, as well as the type of infrastructure the town needs to provide. Public consultations were held in the fall of 2022 and from there, we expect a plan to receive ministerial approval. Next, we have the, the Voyant Alert system. In 2022, Voyant Alert was introduced to Clarenville. Voyant Alert is a multi-purpose communication service designed to keep residents informed of critical events like fires or floods, and as well, day-to-day -day communications such as road maintenance, closures, water advisories. If you're out there in town and you haven't connect it with Voyant Alert yet, go to the town's website and all kinds of information is there on how to do it. I invite you and encourage you to do it. Economic development. In 2022, Clarville made a significant commitment to foster economic growth in the town. Economic Development Committee, the Economic Development Committee under the leadership of Councillor Deidre Strowbridge successfully acquired project funding, spearheaded several development initiatives, and through a job competition, Colin Holloway, was hired as the town's economic development officer. Mr. Holloway brings a strong background and talent in the field of economic development planning and will help move the committee's mandate forward. Key initiative of the a key initiative is the Strategic Tourism Enhancement Program, or STEP, which is designed to develop a comprehensive plan for the region to harness its tourism potential. Recognizing that Clarenville is the gateway to the Bonavent the Peninsula, which sees 70 to 90,000 people a year, uh, an effective tourism strategy developed by stakeholders in our region will serve to increase visitation and the economic spin-off for our town and its business community. Additionally, partnering with Legendary Coast, Eastern Newfoundland, White Hills Resort, Clarenville Nordic Ski Club, and the Discovery Trail Snowmobile Association, the town participated in developing winter tourism content, photos and video, uh, that can be used to help better market our town. This content will assist in moving our marketing forward. Community Health, Arts and Recreation. 2022 was also come home year in the province and Clarenville welcomed many visitors and former residents home. Through the town's recreation department, under the leadership of the town's recreation director, Brandon Reardon, many successful events, including Winter Carnival, Carnival Days, Pumpkin Walk were delivered, and that's just a few and they were enjoyed by hundreds of visitors and residents alike. These events were coupled with recreation public work projects such as the first phase of upgrades to Shoal Harbor Ball Field. Phase two planning work is underway on improvements to the facility's parking, washroom, and playground space. The town has also put out a call to local artists and aspiring artists to submit proposals for the town to purchase and display artwork in the new town hall and on the town's website. Clarenville also continued to provide support to partners in tourism growth, including White Hills Resort, Discovery Trail Snowville Association, and the Nordic Ski Club in assisting in improvements to their respective trail networks within the town boundaries. As well, the town continued to partner with its Trails Committee volunteers, Clarenville Rotary Club, and the Soul Sisters organization towards improving trails in Elizabeth Swan Park and Rotary Trail. 
During 2022, a lighting project was completed on the trail around Elizabeth Swan Park. LED lighting was added to Elizabeth Swan's built Davis Chalet and the Rotary Cookhouse and Bear Mountain, uh, and the Rotary Cookhouse and Bear Mountain Star was upgraded to allow it to be multicolored so that we can support uh, events and occasions throughout the year. Age friendly initiatives. The town, through the 80 plus volunteers that make up random age friendly communities, continues to support Crest Bus for seniors and people with mobility challenges. Since the organization's inception in 2012-2013, its volunteers have contributed approximately 80,000 person hours of volunteer time. And this represents about one and a half million dollars of service. In 2022, Random Age Friendly commenced Age Friendly Business uh, Initiative Project. And, and during the pilot year, uh, they're working with 10 businesses to help them achieve an age friendly status using the Age Friendly Business Assessment Tool. From there, the Random Age Friendly will be reviewing more local businesses, and this initiative will serve Carnival businesses well, providing them with a sustainable competitive advantage and skillfully serving the needs of a growing seniors population. The Doctors' Recruitment Initiative. Communities across Canada are experiencing the challenges of attracting and retaining medical professionals. Clarenville is no exception, and to help address this, Clarenville has partnered with Eastern Health and the local medical community in an initiative to attract and retain medical professionals. In September, the town worked with Memorial University's medical school in support of the Family Medicine Workshop, held right here in Clarenville. Mayor Pickett and Councillor Strobridge welcomed 21 doctors in training. Additionally, the town has developed a welcome kit for new and potential residents to Clarenville, and that kit was provided to the attendees at that workshop. Budget highlights for 2022. Uh, for private investment. This past year has been a productive one of recovery and growth. Despite inflation, higher interest rates, and the lingering after effects of COVID-19, our residents and business owners continue to demonstrate confidence in our town's future. By the end of November 2022, 27 new permits were issued for residential dwellings compared to 31 in 2021. Combined with 189 permits issued for other forms of residential construction and renovation, this constitutes a $12.7 million investment in Clarenville. Commercially, five new development permits were issued compared to two permits in 2021. Combined with 33 other forms of commercial construction and renovation, this constitutes a $6.38 million investment in Clarenville. So this $19 million investment, combined investment, is a testament to the strength of our local economy and the resilience as a community. The fiscal plan for 2023. The 2023 budget presents a plan for the town's revenue and expenditures in the year ahead. This planning has been a consultative effort. The Finance Committee sought internal, sought internal and external input. Each of the town's departments was asked to prioritize their requirements for the year ahead. Council and staff put a concerted effort into strategically spending uh, that we know will support the town's continued growth. I want to first express my appreciation on behalf of our committee, Councillor Heber Smith, Councillor Deed Strobridge, and myself, to our management staff and their, for their dedication and commitment to starting the budgetary process. Special thanks to Angela Giles, our Director of Corporate Services, Town Clerk, and David Harris, our CAO who all spent many hours evaluating the various scenarios. I use the word many sparingly. Additionally, I want to extend a thank you to the Director of Public Works, Rick Wells, Fire Chief Corey Feltham, and Recreation Manager Baron Reardon, as well as our outstanding office staff who gathered the information for the committee. Council's overall budget for 2023 matches revenues and expenditures in the amount of $11,407,830 compared to $10,426,399 in 2022. That's an increase of 9.41% from the 22 budget year. So there were some increases. Increases in our town's expenses can be summarized into what we refer to as the three I's. Inflation, interest, and investment. Inflation has been significant financial impact 
on the 2023 operating budget. Increased costs for fuel, salt, and most other supplies and services accounted for a majority of the increase. Council anticipates continued higher than normal inflation rate, which will be factored into, or which are factored into the 2023 budget. I have a graphic there in the document that talks about, looks at the last quarter of 2022 and the price of gasoline and the price of diesel. And if you just get a sense, gasoline was $1.68 at one point, it went up to $2.11. Diesel was $2.07 at one point, it went up to $3.09. Those are considerable expenses and the town burns through a lot of gas and a lot of diesel. So those two items alone have had a significant impact. Interest. Council has enjoyed historically low interest rates as low as 2%. These low rates and the commitment to pay down debt have reduced the town's debt burden over the last number of years. Unfortunately, future costs are expected to exceed 5%. Because of this, we're expecting the town's annual debt servicing ratio to raise to a little over 16%. This will result in a significant diversion of revenue that could have been put towards programs and services, but now we have to use it to pay interest. I have uh, a, a graphic there that shows interest rates. You know, at the beginning of 2022, the prime rate was 0.25%. Today, it's 4.25%. That's an astounding growth in one year. Investment in people. In the fall of 2022, Council reached a new four-year collective agreement with its unionized staff with similar agreements uh, to our non-union staff being finalized. Staff will receive a 9% wage increase over the term and a $1,500 signing bonus. The total costs of wages and salaries for 2023 is estimated to be approximately 30% of the total operating budget. Council was pleased to reach an agreement that is both reasonable and fair to the employees and taxpayers. In 2022, the town contracted a third party to conduct an organizational review. This review also resulted in some new positions to address the needs of our growing town. Over the past few months, council has hired the following positions, public works manager, community recreation coordinator, economic development officer, office clerks, and town clerk. Two of these positions are new positions for the town. Others are simply replacements for staff who have left or who have retired. In addition to road and bridge maintenance and construction, the budget process allowed for discussions to address some much needed equipment and other expenditures required to advance and maintain the service levels in the town. Some of these items budgeted for 2023 include speed sign for Huntley Drive, mentioned in the, the minute, minutes, $6,000. Pest control measures, $10,000. Lift station virtual monitoring, $15,000. Water line decommissioning for the Shoal Harbor Pump House, $30,000. Sidewalk construction, Russell Place and Shoal Harbor Drive and Memorial Drive, $72,000. A sewer jet trailer, which helps clean out sewers, and as has been noted, will uh, save money in the long term. Uh, that is $150,000. A new dump truck, $400,000. Pickup truck for public works, four-wheel drive, $70,000. A multi-purpose tractor for recreation, $42,000. It will plow snow and mow grass. Pickup truck for recreation, $50,000, smaller pickup truck. Improvements to the Shoal Harbor Play Area Age-Friendly Park, $50,000, which will be used to leverage other sources of funding for a larger project. The 2023 budget planning operating expenditures, planned operating expenditures. Carnival classifies its annual operating expenditures in seven departmental categories. These categories include general administration, which is the administrative costs associated with running the town. Fire and protective services, the Carnival Fire Department and enforcement. Transportation services, which is really infrastructure and public works. Environmental health, which is water and sewer. Planning and development, all planning and community economic development. Recreation and cultural services, which is arts and recreation. And finally, fiscal services, which is our financials and borrowing. General administration. The general administration budget will see an increase of just over 
This is mainly due to inflationary changes over 2022 budget, along with the re and along with the result of some new hiring based on the organizational review recommendations noted above. The additional human resources, along with related processing software purchases, training and fees, will provide the town with the ability to enhance the focus on procurement efforts. Procurement processes are legislated by the province and will also result in a more efficient purchasing structure over time and allow for cost savings for each department. Through this budget, there's a provision for community grants to various not-for-profit organizations that, will offer, that offer valuable contributions to our town. The town will, budget five, uh, will also budget a $5,000 grant in 2023 to assist Carnival Nordic Ski Club with the purchase of a new trail groomer. Again this year, the town will continue to support Random Age Friendly Crest, us, and the Heritage Society, and many other not-for-profit organizations. In terms of fire and protective services, the Carnival Fire Department and enforcement budget will see an increase of approximately 7% in 2023. Also, this department, um, also in this department, this will result in an increase mainly due to inflation. Some of the increases will consist of an investment in a new website for the department, as well as an increase in the annual fire, uh, an increase for the annual fire convention, which in 2023 will be held here in Clarenville. We'll have over 200 firefighters in town. The town's volunteer fire department provides such valuable service to our residents and therefore council would like to express our sincere gratitude for the work that they do. And one of the main objectives this year is to avail the funding to improve emergency service provisions for weather related events, climate change. We're going to plan to purchase an emergency generator for our fire hall for emergency backup power. Transportation services. The town's transportation budget, which includes public works operations, street lighting, and snow removal, will see an increase of approximately 10.5%. This increase is due to inflationary costs. The largest inflationary cost in the budget is the cost of salt, for which the town has budgeted an extra $110,000. However, gas prices have also continued to have a significant impact. As noted earlier, this budget will also see an additional amount for road signs to address school child safety along Huntley Drive by the addition of an electronic sign uh, for speeding uh, that will cost $6,000. Environmental health. The Environmental Health Department, which includes water and sewer operations, chemical supplies, and waste management, will see an increase of just 1%. The cost of this budget has been kept minor due to the budget of purchase of a sewer jet trailer that will allow for the reduction in rental costs for similar equipment. The trailer will affect the fiscal services budget and we'll discuss that later in the report. Planning and development. The planning and development department, which includes beautification, environment, community development, and communications, will see an increase of 64%. This is attributable to funds being allocated for human resources for economic development, along with additional funds to leverage support for tourism strategic projects, such as the 2023 Winter Expo being cost shared with the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. It also includes an additional $10,000 to address pest issues in the town and uh, the continuation of the doctor retention grants to attract and retain physicians for the area. Under recreation and cultural services, overall, the expenses for this department have increased by just over 7%, mainly due to inflationary costs. Additional changes to the recreation uh, are, the capital uh, are of capital nature and will be addressed throughout the report. Some additional considerations to the budget include a new website, upgrading the computer control system for the refrigeration plant at the event center, as well as rebuilding the evaporative condenser, the thing that makes ice at the event center. This budget also includes funds for parks and playgrounds. Fiscal services. This department, which includes the town's loan payments, debt charges, and also funding the town's capital works program, will have an increase of approximately 9.5% compared to last year. Much of it is due to the increase in interest costs for borrowing. It also reflects additions to the cost of capital investment throughout the various departments. The town did not any, add any significant cost to its debt level 
as new borrowed items announced in this year's budget will, n will not have principal payments until uh, it will not have principal payments in 2023. The town continues to use cost saving initiatives through products that are available for borrowing. However, due to increases in interest rates, there's been a considerable increase in this budget. Predictions do show that uh, interest rates will start to decline again in 2023, late 2023. So that's our, that's a, a capsule of our planned spending for this year. Now I want to switch to capital projects, which are long-term, long-lasting projects that are usually borrowed. Shoal Harbor Causeway Bridge. Council is very pleased to advise the residents of Clarenville and the region that Shoal Harbor Causeway Bridge will begin construction in 2023 with a budget cost of $3.6 million. The funding, through the Investment and Infrastructure Program, will provide a 33% contribution from each of the federal and provincial governments. The town will also contribute 33% to the project in the amount of $1,166,499. This structure will not have a large impact on the 2023 budget as the first loan payment for the bridge will take place in 2024. Roads and sidewalks. Mr. Mayor, I'm pleased to announce again this year the town has provided funding in the budget in the amount of $550,000 for road and sidewalk improvements. This is to improve local roads and sidewalks and the addition uh, and in addition to the town's portion of any government related road funding. The town has increased this year's budget to address sidewalks on Memorial Drive, Russell Place, as well as others. In 2021, the town was approved for a three-year capital works program in the amount of $5,016,959 with a contribution from the town of approximately $900,000. Through this program, the town has seen road and water sewer upgrades for Gilbert Street, Shoal Harbor Drive. The 2023 portion of this fund will include Balsam Street, Emerald Avenue, and Somerville Heights. The town has budgeted for this portion of the project as a loan. This will be a great addition to the recent capital infusion for the community. In 2022, funds were also reprofiled for a prior unspent municipal multi-year capital works program for the restoration of Wiseman's Road. This work will be completed in 2023. The town will also receive its annual federal gas tax funding in the amount of $296,706. This funding will also be used to carry out local infrastructure and asset management improvements. Under equipment for public works, council will also borrow to purchase the following equipment for public works, a dump truck in the approximate amount of $400,000, dump trucks are not cheap, a sewer jet trailer in the amount of $150,000 and a pickup truck for $70,000. Public Works will also purchase some smaller equipment for a combined cost of $50,000. Recreation equipment. In recreation, monies will be provided for the purchase of a multi-use tractor of approximately $42,000. This will allow the Recreation Department to address multiple tasks in a more efficient and effective manner. Funds have also been allocated in the form of a loan for a truck for the Recreation Department pickup truck. This department will also receive monies in the form of a loan to allow for leveraging of monies to proceed with the plan for designs of the age-friendly park as well as the Shoal Harbor Playground near the Ballfield. This, Mr. Mayor, represents our plan for the expense side of the budget. Now for the revenue side. Planned revenues. Mr. Mayor, the projected revenues required for this budget are $11,407,083, an increase in 9.4% over the 2022 budget. Clarenville's two major sources of revenue come from residential and commercial taxation. I will elaborate, I will elaborate on these. Residential taxes. Taxation is tied to property values uh, that are provided to towns by the municipal assessment agencies. Clarenville, unlike some other medium-sized towns, did not have a significant increase in commercial and residential property assessments in 2022. If we do not adjust our mill rates this coming year, we would not be able to cover the additional costs of inflation and interest or, or be able to provide enough investment to allow the town to continue to provide the level of service that it needs. I would like to reiterate that as a council, we're committed to a continued and concerted effort to further build our community while getting the best possible value of our tax dollars and emphasizing affordable, affordability as well 
as the past couple years have been so difficult for so many. Council and staff have focused their efforts on cost savings to ensure residents can benefit from some services without any major tax increases. Mr. Mayor, this year the residential tax rate in Clarenville will increase from 7.8 mills to 8.3 mills, a 0.5 mill increase. As an example, an average $200,000 home, which is the average price of a home in this town, will see a tax increase of approximately $100. Water and sewer fees for residential users will not be impacted in 2023. Commercial taxes. The business community is a key contributor to Clarenville's tax base. As previously mentioned in, the, in expenditure highlights, we continue to work with our business community and are taking steps to assist and grow our business sector through investment in recreational activities and other tourism initiatives. Investments in communications, promotions, and economic development are positive steps in highlighting the business potential of our town. Mr. Mayor, this year, the commercial portion of the town's budget was difficult as commercial values have slightly decreased. Therefore, to continue to maintain the services that the town uh, provides, there will be some adjustments to the mill rate for commercial property tax, as well as some business tax. There will be no increases in water and sewer tax. The commercial property tax will increase from 8.5 mills to 9.5 mills. As not all properties have their values decrease at the same rate, this may mean that some businesses may see small increase, decrease, or remain the same. The business tax rates will increase for Class S and Class F. Class S includes retailers over 13,000 square feet, which will increase by 3 mills from 17 to 20 mills. Class F for banks and financial institutions will see an increase of 5 mills from 115 to 120. Class F would also see a change in the minimum, of, minimum amount of tax for their category based on a three-tier system. Banks will have a 40,000 minimum, credit unions will have a 30,000 minimum, and other financial institutions will have a 5,000. 5,000, big, big difference. Thank you. All other business classes will remain unchanged. Water and sewer fees for commercial businesses will not be impacted in 2023. Recreational fees. Appreciating the cost of providing town services has risen. The town will increase recreational fees throughout 2023 by approximately 5%. The new structure and its effective timelines will be outlined in the town's recreational fee structure policy. Other financial considerations. Finally, Mr. Mayor, we recognize people and families in our community are experiencing financial, uh, financial challenges. Residents who do not own property are charged a usage tax known as the poll tax. Although we'd like to eliminate this tax, it does contribute to approximately a quarter million dollars a year to our town to help provide the services that everybody benefits from. There will, be, uh, there will not be an increase in the poll tax in 2023. Additionally, to ease the burden of taxation for low-income property owners, we will continue to offer low-income tax reductions for those who qualify. However, the, invest, uh, the income threshold for the discount will be improved to apply as follows. If your annual income is between zero and $25,000, you will be eligible for a 40% tax reduction municipal tax reduction. Between $25,001 and $28,000, you will be eligible for a 30% tax reduction. And between $28,001 and $30,000, you will be eligible for a 20% tax reduction. A view to 2023 and beyond. Looking forward, this budget is committed to continued investment in Clarenville by developing positive partnerships, working with the community, the business sector, and government to keep the momentum going. This budget, Mr. Mayor, will, uh, we believe, is a budget that strikes the right tone for the challenging time that we live in. We're restricting our spending at the same time, planning for growth. Uh, that will inevitably follow getting out of this period that we're in. Last but not least, Mr. Mayor, I'm very pleased to report that the budget leaves us with a debt ratio of approximately 16%, which is well under the 30% threshold permitted by the provincial government. This provides us with sound financial foundation to take our town into the future. 
This is a low death ratio, which certainly keep us in good shape with the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs and give us the ability to borrow money should the need arise for an emergency if it should occur.